I'm Bill DeFoy and welcome to It's Just That Simple. And joining me right now is my very lovely co-host, Michelle Wilson. Michelle, good to have you back. Hey, good afternoon. How are you doing? I'm today, doing Bill? well, thank <laughs> you. Listen, we always have a very interesting topic to talk about. So what's on the docket today? Well, actually, we're going to talk about wills and family uh, estate planning because, um, you know, actually today I was working with a small business owner today and, uh, you know, he's been in business since 1977, you know, and he had a very, he's having a very successful business. And I sat there, he has no type of estate planning in place. And, you know, he has three children who are grown and uh, he's been married, divorced, and going through another divorce. And I'm like, wow, you know, he hasn't updated his will. And I'm, and I'm like, well, what are you going to do as far as your business, your succession, and so forth? So I think it's really important to talk about that today. It's also um, my mother's birthday today. Well, happy birthday, Mom. And she's in heaven celebrating it with Jesus. So I'm really excited just, you know, and that's also another, you know, talking about estate planning is really important because I remember when my mother was sick and I was talking to my dad, you know, we, we, we um, don't like to talk about, you know, death and so forth, but it's really important. And I know that once my, my mother went to heaven, my dad finally said, okay, let's get you know let's take care of it so, does it yeah. take a life altering experience like that when you lose a loved one to get serious about putting together your last will and testament i believe so a lot of times you know there's really like three things it's procrastination and there's one that's like oh well it's not going to happen to me and it happens at at any age and you know th uh, three it's cost people think it just really costs a lot but you know it's going to cost you more if you don't take care of it and as circumstances change, so does your final request. You mentioned this business owner. He's been through one marriage. He's going through a second one and ending in divorce. And with each of those two divorces, his final wishes have altered now. This would be the third time. Yeah, I mean, I've actually heard a story where um, this happened that, uh, you know, a couple of divorces later and they failed to, you know, go through their, their documents and so forth. And so the first wife got the life insurance because they didn't change the beneficiary. So you always want to update uh, your estate and, you know, just really make sure that everything's current and that your children, I mean, if you have uh, children from another marriage, you know, if you have stepchildren, and it's unfortunate. That's what really breaks families tear them apart is you know when a loved one passes away and the wishes haven't been you know cleared up in the beginning and, and the kids will fight over it and exes and everything else will come out the woodworks it's a very difficult conversation to have or even to face because it is inevitable for each one of us I tell people and I kid, you know I kid around by saying I I plan on living forever and so far so good but the reality is that one day you and I and others in this room we're not going to be here any longer yes that is reality and you know a lot of times people think wills or estate planning has to do with life after death but what about while you're living you know there's also your your medical directive or health care directive or just a living trust you know what are your wishes if something were to happen to you if you were in a serious accident uh, you know you get a chronic disease and you I mean or illness and you couldn't take care of your finances that you didn't you know right in your right mind so a lot of people don't think about even if you're living you still need to have those uh, documents in place well I know that you know I faced some surgery a couple of years ago and they were you know the doctors and nurses were coming to me well we've got these forms are you interested in filling them out you know and it's like yeah, I'm, I'm dealing with a life directive here hmm you know and it really causes one to to sit there and pause and go do I really want to do? Yeah, I better. Yeah. And you know what? You're in a stressful situation, so it makes it probably even more difficult to make a decision, you know, when you're you're going through something like that. You know, you're hanging on between life and death. And so that's why you want to do the pre-planning so that you really know what your wishes are because that's the thing, you know, making a decision under stress may not be the right decision for you. And doesn't that also impact those that are left behind? Because it seems to me that if you don't take action, guess what? You're going to weigh them down with that responsibility, and it's an unnecessary responsibility that you're settling those individuals with. Yeah, especially if you have you know, um, siblings or you have um, children who don't see eye to eye, and then you know that is such a burden that one might feel responsible if they decide you know, to make a decision that's 
against the other person. So it can cause, you know, just rivalry between the children and, and, and siblings and so forth. Or even, you know, I've had friends where, um, you know, the, a husband and a wife were married and, and the mom had a different choice than the husband, but the husband had, you know, the right because they were married. So just having that conversation of what you want your wishes are, it can really um, help with all the stress uh, during an illness or even after an illness, just to make sure that your wishes are taken care of. Well, having had two younger siblings that are both gone now, I can attest mm -hmm. to that. Now with my sister, it was one thing. With my brother, it was a whole different set of circumstances because he had lived out of state and some people had intervened without contacting his next of kin, which, guess what? That was me, and I didn't find out mm. that he had passed on until I was searching the Internet as to where wow. he was living. Yeah, that's... And really, his obit pops up. That's unfortunate, you know, and it's just amazing how people... Um, just kind of behave their behavior when someone is like I said they pass away and there's money involved it changes people unfortunately you know and even sometimes it's not just about money you know it's really you know if you have kids especially young kids you know you want to make sure that your children are going to be um, the, the right person is going to be taking care of your, your children if you don't have a will or some type of estate planning in place the state's going to you know make those decisions for you so that's another you know another thing to think about you know it's just like I said it's kind of like your last love letter to your family really and it is a, a love letter mm -hmm. it really is because you know you you're really making your final statement to them as your family members yes absolutely and um i mean like i said it's probably your last love letter but it's probably it is the most important love letter too you know well it's always good i know that when i call my children you know the last thing that you'll hear me ever say to them is you know larry i love you uh christina i love you uh, john i love you you know and you know to their respective families and to me, that's very important because I want them to be aware that if that was my final words to them, I want them to know that I love them. But this takes it really a step further. Absolutely. You know, and how can you say I love you? Like I said, if you die, what we call in state where you don't have a will or any type of state planning. And then there's cost involved, you know, um, and probate, you know, and that like I said, bringing stress on 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 your family. So, that, you know, your family's they're going to be cursing you instead of loving you because you didn't take care of it, you know? Sure, right. sure, sure. Absolutely. So what are some steps that people can take to make sure that they have their last will and testament or a living trust um, in place when the inevitable happens, not should or if, yeah. but when it happens. It is going to happen. Um, I always say that seven out of 10 people have a will, but 10 out of 10 people will definitely need a will. And really, I say start with just being educated. You know, why is it important? I know we talked about it today, but, you know, this really the importance of being educated and um, speaking with a professional, you know, a will in your estate plan is actually a legal document. And a lot of times you can go online and download the document or go to like one of these office, you know, depot places and get get a, a legal form. But it's a legal document. So you definitely want to speak with an estate attorney who specializes in that area. So that would be the second thing. Educate, speak with a professional, and you really want to start talking to your family, you know, just really um, sharing with them what your wishes are and those are probably the three simple steps and and like I said it is a, a process it could be very simple and and it's not as cost I mean like I said it, it people think that cost is the reason why they can't, can't afford it but you can't not afford it because like I said it's it's gonna cost somewhere along the way and I'm sure that you know you can find alternative ways whether you go through a document provider like you know an office depot or a staples or go through one of these services that they do and prepare the documents. All you have to do is come in and sign it and have it notarized and file it. Or if you seek out legal counsel, um, there are cost points to all of them, but you have to take a look at your budget and determine what can I afford realistically. But like you said, it's also important to understand you cannot 
afford not to have this in place. Absolutely. You know, I work with families and business owners all the time, and there is affordable legal care out there, you know, and a lot of times it's kind of a combination. You can have the documents, you can prepare them, but have an attorney, I just say, really have an attorney uh, consult, you know, review it and have a consultation with them and let them really advise you based on your asset, you know, your wishes, and, you know, just everything involved because it, it, it goes from your property to your bank accounts to your car you know the silverware I mean people will fight over silverware so you know it's all those things that are really like I said important as and when you're living but also when you want to just leave a legacy for your family so leaving it to your family and true with you know with um, these kind of things you would probably want to leave you know for your family members some people like to leave uh, monies towards a particular charity or even a church um, that will continue that legacy. Absolutely, yeah. You know, your church and just the different charities and so forth. And so if you, you know, leave this earth without having those documents, guess what? It's going to be uh, eating up the cost and attorneys and then you, you know, probate and just all these other things that it could have gone to a good cause. So even not only your family, but if you want to leave a legacy, just like I said, to those charities and churches. Well, you're absolutely right about the probate and its cost. I mean, I had an aunt when she was alive. That's what she did. Mm -hmm. She was a paralegal who specialized in probate and she made some good money handling probate. Mm -hmm. And then she was able, because she was, she probably had the proper documents in place. Proper yeah. documents, <laughs> proper training. And she worked with not just one attorney, but several attorneys that would use her as a service to process the documents. You know, that comes to mind. You know, I hear a lot of well, celebrities. I remember when Michael Jackson, when he passed away and he didn't have even a will for his children and how many thousands, I think hundreds and thousands of dollars just to really, you know, who's going to take care of their children? And they were young, you know, so I, I think that's, you know, extremely important, just really the care of your children. So yeah, all that is, is extremely important. So let's recap a little bit. How important, again, is it to have a living will or a, a document uh, specifying your, your last wishes? Well, like I said, you know, um, People think of cost, but we really know that people, you know, families, they love each other. So they want to make sure that their family is taken care of. And so, you know, if you have a house and assets, you definitely want to make sure you have, uh, you know, proper estate planning. And the will is actually the first step, you know, having a will. And so that's why I say education is really important. And this really speaking with the professional and making sure that the legal documents are, you know, in order and then update on a regular basis if there's, you know, any type of change in, in family dynamics. Because even if you have grandchildren or great grandchildren, I mean, all that is uh, really important to have part of your will because you want to leave a legacy, like I said, not only to your family, but to your community. Well, in your particular case, you have a son and a daughter, and if Deshelle, your daughter, had children down the line, you may even want to provide for them as well, and so that dynamic would change. Like, I have grandchildren, and, you know, I want to leave something for them. Yeah, and when I actually was doing my estate planning, I had actually said, okay, well, my daughter is going to be the one who's going to take care of my, my son, her little brother. But even the attorney said, well, what happens if you two are together and something happens? Then what? And I never thought of that. And I'm like, and my dad, you know, he's older in age. So, yeah, he only may be, you know. 99, let's say he's going to live to 99, but you know, what happens after that? And I really had to take a look at that. Who's going to, and my son has medical needs, you know, and he's, he's ill. So who's going to take on that, um, kind of that burden of taking care of him. And I never even thought of that until I spoke with an attorney. So it's really good to have a contingency plan for your plan. Exactly. And just speaking with the professional is going to ask those questions based on, like I said, your assets and your wishes. And they, they deal with it on an everyday basis. So they'll know uh, what type of questions to ask. You know, and that's probably problematic for the person because they haven't thought about that. Because I can understand if they go into, say, an attorney's office to have this done and the attorney says, well, what happens? And, you know, in this scenario, and you go, gee, I... I hadn't even thought about that. Absolutely. I always say you don't know what you don't know. And another time when I was actually in that consultation with my uh, attorney, he was asking about, I have a brother. And um, actually, we are talking about my, my dad's uh, estate. And he's like, well, what about... Um, you know, his wife. And I never thought of that. You know, what about if the wife contests? And I'm like, oh, well, I never thought of that. So yeah, definitely. They will ask the questions based on your, you know, your family dynamics. 
Well, all good information, Michelle. Let's get an address and a phone number and a website where people can get a hold of you. Okay, well, you can reach me at michellewilsoninternational.com. And my telephone number is 805-304-5088. And you can also reach me um, at my email. And Michelle is spelled with one L, so it's M-I-C-H-E-L-E at michellewilsoninternational.com. Michelle Wilson, as always, it's just that simple. I'm Bill DeFoy. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. It's Just That Simple is a production of the Heritage Media Group.